Okay, so let's uh, see how we can we can do this. <coughs> so, step one: when you get your bill, um, first of all, you take the money that you uh, would normally pay the bill with. Yeah, just put it away. Put it in a bank account. Um, stick it on your pillow. Whatever, whatever it is, keep that money aside. Okay. Um, but you know, this is this is your this is the way to do it without without actually you know having any fear of, of comeback because you've always got the money there. Okay. Um, and the point of this is that right now we're we're all increasingly under pressure. You know, um, utility bills are going up. You know, petrol's going up. VAT went up at the beginning of the year. Um, all these, you know, food prices going up, spiraling up, crazily, um, and our wages literally are staying the same, going down or disappearing altogether. So we're all under pressure, um, and most of us experience that uh, Robin Peter to pay Paul situation, where well, I've got to pay this bill, but I don't have to pay this one until next week, so I use that money for that. Um, this is one, you know, using this method, you know, you've always got, um, you've got breathing room essentially, yeah? You don't have to use that money for quite some time. Um, it's been uh, two years for me um, until uh, a court case today, but uh, I'll go back, we go into that later on. But it's been two years. So in that two years, I've withheld the money um, for, for, for all these utilities. Um, I've been able to use that money um, and give myself breathing room, and um, uh, and you know, if I if I get to the point where I need to pay it, I get scared or whatever, you can just pay them the money. But the point is, you've held on to your money for longer. Okay. Anyway, um, so you put that that bill money in a separate account or uh, or stored safe, and the next part is to make sure you keep the the. Uh, the bill together. Normally, they ask you to, to cut off the remittance and and, and, uh, and send that back. But keep the whole thing together. Uh, and, and what you do, you fill it out, as I said, like a check. Now, um, I've uh, I also write sort of the uh, the amount in numbers, just like you do on a check. And the person it goes to is usually already filled in at the top. Yeah. Um, so I sign it, I date it, I, I put the amount in, um, and on the back, I endorse it. So signature there, put the date, and put my name and address on there. Okay? <clears throat> the other thing I do is above the, uh, on, on the actual uh, statement part, I put um, some instructions to the uh, chief accountant. So I type, I type paid in full, attention of the chief accountant, reset the account to zero in accordance with the Bill of Exchange Act 1882. The point is that uh, your bod, you know, who receives it at the uh, you know postal desk, <laughs> will not have any idea what that means. But the chief accountant or the CFO absolutely does know what this means. He will know what what uh, that this is a uh, valid bill of exchange. So I send this, uh, I send this recorded delivery. So you know that they get it. Okay. So what happens? Seven days later, several days later, you'll get Alexa saying, um, you know, oops, uh, you didn't seem to, uh, didn't pay us any money. Um, this is this is one I actually got. Um, to do. Yeah, it basically says, oh, well, we can't find your money. Um, you know, could you could you prove that you uh, sent you know, sent us any? So usually I uh, I send them back a, a copy of what uh, what I sent them. Um, <coughs> so um, what did they do with that response? Well, they said you didn't pay us. Okay, that's all they did. They said you didn't pay us. They stated they haven't been paid. What well, they said in that letter, at the moment we have not received any payments towards your electricity usage. We have received a completed gyro slip from dated March 28th 
but this does not con constitute permanent. A gyro slip can be either used as blah 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 blah. Yeah, that sounds quite reasonable, doesn't it? But yeah, it's quite correct. They haven't been paid. As I said before, there's no money, so you can't ever pay. Right? And that's because we're in a bankruptcy, because there's no money to pay with. Um, they're basically asking you for more money. It's just an offer. They're just offering for you to ask to, to send more money, please. Let's see what they didn't do. Anybody got a clue what they didn't do? They didn't give you the remittance back. They didn't return the remittance. Yeah? Um, they've actually accepted your offer to, to effect payment. There's a, um, a rule in contract law. Let's see if I can remember how this goes. Um, it's to do with uh, offer and acceptance. If the um, if the offerer proffers property or services, and the offeree, the person who's uh, receiving the offer, um, having a, a reasonable opportunity to return or refuse, exercises ownership rights over the property or accepts the benefits of any service, then the offer is accepted. So, if you, if uh, for instance. I owe you um, 10 quid, you see me on the street, and uh, I say, you say, Dave, you owe me 10 quid. I say, well, I haven't got 10 quid, but I've got this Kylie Minogue CD, yeah? And you take it, and you keep it, and you go and play with it, and you're dancing around with it, with it. Um, you've accepted it. You can't now come back to me three months later and say, well, where's that 10 quid? You know, I'll have the, uh, the right to say, well, Give me my property back. I thought you accepted it. Yeah, that's offer and acceptance. So what? What is acceptance? It's a, an agreement by express act or implication by the conduct that's keeping hold of something um, to the terms of an offer, so that a binding contract is formed. So when they accept something, it's a binding contract. So how do we respond? So we got, sorry, sorry? Just, just at one query, um, so why didn't they send them the slip back? What would be the reason to it? Well, guess what? It's a check. What do they do with a check? So they've cashed it, so they don't have it anymore. It's gone. It's gone through the system. It's gone through the system. It's not just a, a piece of paper that they go, oh, okay, I've got this check, uh, I've got a piece of paper that goes to that name, sorry. Um, and then they throw the, uh, oops, and then they throw that little slip away. No, they actually use that and they, they, they bank it, they, they deposit it. Um, and it, they, they know how to monetize it, essentially. So if you were to go out to them and say, well, can I please have one of the bits Exactly, they won't give it to you. And then I'll give you, I'll give you, you know, a, a check. You're jumping your head. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how you uh, you deal with it. Um, you apologise, you know, and uh, offer to correct it. You know, it appears I made an honest mistake. Please forgive me. Um, I was under the impression that my remittance was accepted and the matter was settled. I'm happy to effect payment by some other means on the condition that you return my remittance immediately. <laughs> Please return my admittance within 14 days and I will send payment by return of post. If you fail to return my remittance within a specified time, then it will be deemed that remittance has been accepted and the account is settled. Okay? It's, this, is, this is like fair and, and reasonable and honourable behaviour. You know, I've given you something and you're now saying that it's not been accepted. And you think, well, okay, give me my thing back and um, Let's, you know, I'll, I'll pay you some other way. Yep. I just want to say, I don't think it's wise that she would be made a mistake. Why is that? You're admitting your problem. It you won't so that's your problem. No, uh, well, I don't, I don't actually see it that way because, first of all... Um, if, it's your, if it's your understanding that you've paid it, that's your understanding. It's not a mistake. Don't admit to be a mistake. Your understanding... It appears. See? wording is very crucial here. It appears that I've made a mistake. Yeah, according to who? Well, no, I'm just, I'm just, this is, this is me trying to be honourable. Um, I've got from you, that, uh, or from the, from the utility company, 
oh, you haven't paid. Well, hang on, I thought I made, I, I thought I had. It appears that I, you know, I, I must have made a mistake. If you think, I, if you think I haven't paid you, you know, please forgive me. Nobody can not forgive you for an honest mistake. Right? And we're not. This isn't about being dishonest. None of this is a, um, about, uh, you know, getting away with something. Yeah, we're, we're trying to uh, not get ripped off. You know, we are being ripped off wholesale. You know? um, and this is this is us trying to to not be ripped off. Yeah, as I said, there's a, there's a criminal um, banking elite behind this that is keeping us under control using money. Yeah. We, we, all have to, we all have to earn money to live. We're the only animal on this planet who has to do that. Yeah? Uh, who else, what other animal has to, has to go somewhere and do something it doesn't want to do for eight hours a day in order to live? The money is, is this control mechanism to keep us going to those jobs. And increasingly these days, those jobs are meaningless. They don't mean anything. Uh, I don't want to rant here, but um, you know, every job that um, you can even possibly imagine isn't what we think it is. You know, people go become doctors because they have this genuine need to to help people or cure people. But what do doctors end up being? They end up being drug pushers for pharmaceutical companies. You know, policemen become policemen because they want to help people and, uh, and and stop crime. They become tax collectors. Any job you can think of, somewhere along the line, you're doing harm to people. Not for your for your benefit. You think you're doing, you know, your little bit is 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 helping some way, but somewhere along the line, it's hurting people. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a computer programmer, and. Um, I, I tried to make a conscious effort to find a job that didn't hurt people. I ended up at a company that does um, online um, competitions. Very innocuous. Guess what? I find out later on that the, the competitions aren't the, uh, the key element. The key element is capturing behavioural data, you know, hidden behavioural data, to sell to the corporations to exploit. So again, I find myself hurting people. So it doesn't matter who, you know, if you, what, what you do in, in, this, in this system, because that's what it is, it's a system. It's been built up deliberately. It's a web. It doesn't matter what you do in that system, you're gonna be hurting your fellow man. Um, and more, I'll, I'll come to that in a little while. Right, so what they do next, uh, apart from uh, um, intimidating you with nasty sounding letters, um, they can sell your, your the debt to debt collections agency. Um, so let's see, dealing with debt collections agencies. First of all, don't panic. Okay, these these guys um, operate on this uh, this idea that you don't like people coming to your door saying we want we want pain we want pain. You know, you, you suddenly get that, that horrible feeling, and yeah, they they rely on that. Okay. What they are, they're, a, they're just a third party company who've got nothing to do with you whatsoever. Who are, who are interfering with your affairs. That's, that's all they are. They have absolutely no power over you whatsoever. Again, until you give it to them. One of their tricks that they do is they'll say, you know, you just have to give us one pound a month. You know, that's all you have to do. Just give us one pound a month. And if you do that, guess what that means? Well, yeah, it means that now you've admitted that you owe them something. And now they're entitled to come after you for the full amount. Because you said, well, I'm, you owe them something because you, you're paying them. You know, that, that, that's, a, that's a, um, an express con or an implied contract through your conduct. Yeah? So you're now contracted with them. But until you do that, they've got no power of you whatsoever. The other thing is that um, essentially they've bought your debt, they've paid your debt off. So what do you owe now? 
yeah, essentially. Um, if uh, I think I don't have got. Um, okay, so this is a part of um, a letter. This is a meeting part of a, a letter to debt collections agencies. Um, uh, I'll very quickly go through it. Um, as a third party in intervener um, in this matter, acting without authority, I do not give you permission to interfere with my commercial affairs as you do, don't have any legal standing. Um, I do not have a contract with you and any permission you believe you may have from me is hereby withdrawn. If you believe you have the power of attorney to act on my behalf, you are hereby fired. And any consent that you believe you may have, tacit or otherwise, is hereby withdrawn. Um, I'm familiar with the terms of Section 40 of the Administration of Justice Act. Now, before you uh, use these uh, these notices, I, I suggest you don't go and have a look up of these these acts because uh, they're very very eye-opening. They're there for your protection, essentially. And uh, you know, once you're armed with that those the knowledge of those acts, you know they can't uh, the people can't sort of force themselves on you again. Um, is that in here? Is that in here? Um, no, I haven't, I haven't put the the uh, act in there, but you can easily go online and just uh, type in the administration. No, it's the letter. The, what you're reading. Oh yeah, sorry. The, the entire letter is uh, is in the in the handout. One of the sample uh, um, net Fletcher's agencies' letters. 